after coming back from break a few hands later, David Baker opens under the gun, and I'm under the gun plus one with ace, 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 three, which generally you don't want to have trips in your hand, but when they're trip aces, it's, it's not so bad, especially when you have a low card to go with it. I pot knowing that he probably has an ace, so nobody else behind me has one, so they're all definitely folding. And uh, get it in with him. David had ace 10, deuce three, double suited, so a very, very strong hand for him as well. But the board was ran out really nicely for me. Nine, eight, queen, king, deuce, so no low. And my ace is held for the high. And I busted him in seventh place. And now my chips were up to 3.1 million, which was still in second, but a very close second to McKenna. After I busted a couple of players, uh, McKenna busted a couple of his own. He uh, busted Marco Johnson in sixth, and then Chris Lee in fifth, and now we're down to four-handed. Soon after that, Chad Power raised the 300,000. I repotted with Ace-King-King King four, putting them all in for about a million. He stuck it in with ace-jack-jack-3 jack with a suit. Two very good hands going up against each other. I happen to be in better shape. Board ran out very well for me. 8-4-4, four, four, which actually gave him a low draw while giving me the high at that point. Um, but turn was an ace, giving me a full house. And river was a 10, which meant no low for him. And full house for me for high against his jacks. So busted him from the tournament. And then we were three-handed. And once we got three-handed, uh, we all started limping quite a bit. Uh, I was limping all of my hands from the button that I wanted to play and the small blind as well. And it really gave us some room, especially after these kind of rapid fire bust outs and stacks were a little bit deeper. Uh, it gave us some room to play some post-flop PLO8, which I felt was to my advantage. My strengths as a poker player don't lie in pre-flop hand selection. I'm, I'm not even particularly good at it. All of my PLO8 experience is in deep stack play and all my strengths as a poker player lie in reading people's hands over multiple streets, reading the way people are playing, and uh, making adjustments. So I was pretty happy to be playing shorthanded with, with effectively deeper stacks and, and seeing some turns in rivers. First hand I played of note three-handed, I limped from the small blind with ace-queen-jack-6 against Ali's big blind, he checked back. I flopped top pair on ace-9-3, fine hand, but not a particularly great hand. I check, he checks back. I turn trips with the ace. I bet 100,000, which is half pot. He raises to 250,000. I do think it's reasonably likely he's bluffing, although he hadn't bluffed much up to that point. But regardless, my hand is just too good to do anything else but call. A river was a three, no low, no flush, no straight. I check, he bets 300,000, and I call. And he taps the table, indicates he was bluffing, and I win a nice pot. And from there, Ali just had a bad run of cards and situations he was just slowly chipping down while uh, McKenna and I were chipping up. And then pretty soon with, with a relatively short stack, he got all in against McKenna on jack six five rainbow with a set of fives. McKenna had a pretty weak preflop hand with eight five four deuce, but actually was in decent shape up against the set because he had the best low draw and double gut shot. Turn seven gave McKenna the straight and the low and Ali did not fill up on the King River. So uh, we were down to heads up. start of heads up, McKenna had me out chip two to one. He had about eight million to my four million, which is, you know, a pretty big chip lead, but there was still so much room to play that I wasn't ultra concerned about it. I was just, you know, ready for a long grind playing some heads up poker. He um, kind of as expected and as advertised, uh, kept up the aggression heads up. And I wasn't making very many hands. And, you know, when you don't make many hands against somebody who keeps firing, you, you end up bleeding some chips. And uh, he was chipping away at my stack and, and had me down to three million to his uh, nine million at one point. So three to one chip disadvantage. There was a pot we played. I limped button with ace 10, nine, four, which I was doing with all of my hands. I checked back jack nine, three, which is a relatively good flop for me. I have second pair top kicker, backdoor second nut low draw, but not a, not a hand I want to be committing a lot of chips with at that point. Term is a six. Uh, bringing a flush draw that I did not have, and McKenna potted, which so far I had noticed a lot of his bets had been half pot. And in a spot like this, actually, I find that people tend to, to pot with 
high hands that are protecting their equity against low draws. And so I actually felt, you know, at this point, it was pretty likely he had, you know, a two pair hand or, or something like that that was, was, well, trying to protect his hand against low draws and get some value. But of course I have a reasonable high hand and a very good low draw, so I call. River's a queen, which is a bad card for me. I, I miss my low and he bets two thirds pot. And given my turn read, I was really surprised at the time because like spidey senses kicked in and I, I even said out loud, I, I don't know why I'm suspicious here. I did feel on the turn that he actually had a, had a good high hand. But um, after saying that, I took plenty of time to think and ended up calling. It's not, it's not a ridiculous hero call by any means when a flush draw misses and all the low draws miss and the straight that does get there, I block. But I do feel like the fact that immediately after he bet, I announced my suspicion, I mean accidentally, um, and then called and, and won against his bluff. Felt, it felt like a big momentum shift. Kind of he went from feeling like he was running over me to, to feeling, you know, like took the wind out of his sails a little bit and, and it definitely felt like a turning point in the match. So the most significant pot of the whole tournament came next. McKenna raised the button to 260. I called in the big blind with ace nine, eight deuce. Very strong hand, uh, heads up certainly. He checked back on queen seven, six, which uh, gave me nut low draw and an open ender. Turn was an eight. So at this point I have second pair top kicker. I have a blocker to the straight and an open ender with my nine and I have nut low. So a really strong hand. I almost surely have the best low hand. There's a very decent chance I have the best high hand, but if not, I have some extra outs. I decided to check because he had been keeping the aggression on. He raised pre, which he was doing some limping. So the fact that he raised means it's more likely he has like a decent low hand. And I felt like even if he didn't, he'd be pretty likely to, to start bluffing or kind of merge or protection betting this turn. There, there are a lot of reasons to bet in a high low game. I checked, he bet 300,000 and I decided to pot it to 1.2 million. The reason for that, I have a hand that has very high equity against his range. It's certainly a a value raise, but there are some nice things that can happen. For example, let's say that he has two pair for the high or he has kings for the high um, and has me beat, he can go ahead and fold if he doesn't have a strong low with it. Or if he has ace three for second nut low with a seven for a pair that I beat, he can go ahead and call. So this is actually like a, I mean, it's, it definitely is categorized as a value raise because I have a very strong hand but it has the benefit of potentially bluffing him off of the high half of the pot um, or even getting called by a hand that I scoop. Um, or, or even if let's say that he calls with two pair and a worse low, I have great equity to improve on the high. He ends up calling River is the five, which completes my straight, giving me the second nut high with my nut low. And I bet pot for 2.92 million. He thinks for a little bit, but ends up calling. I turn over my hand. I actually announce uh, ace deuce straight and he says, how big is your straight? Clearly indicating he had a straight as well. My straight was, was bigger than his and I ended up scooping the pot. And at that point, you know, the, the chip lead shifts from him to, to me having a 10 million to 2 million chip lead and, and being in, you know, commanding position and, you know, very likely to, to take this down. So after that huge pot, it was just a lot of small pots back and forth. I was chipping away a little bit more than he was and had him down to a little under 1 million for, for a massive chip lead and, and not much left for him. He just had a handful of big blinds. I was dealt ace-8-7-4 on the button and up until this point I'd been limping every hand that I played. But with him having something like seven big blinds left, I just decided to pot and force him to pay to put in money with the worst hand. He sticks it in with king-jack. 10, five, which is a hand I'm in really good shape against as you know, I currently have the best high hand with, with ace high and I have the only low draw. So we run it out, nine, three, three, seven, five, and I scoop. And uh, kind of before I knew it, they were, you know, I was shaking Michael's hand. They were handing me the bracelet, taking photos. And, uh, and I had won my third bracelet and, and not to mention, you know, 560 some thousand dollars uh, to go with it. It's, you know, it's kind of surreal at that point. I've won bracelets before, but this one for some reason was the most unexpected. Even though I had, I had felt, you know, at, at one point in the final table, oh, I could actually, I could actually win this thing. Um, it kind of snuck up on me. And uh, my other two bracelets were such big, like, we were on the final table on the main stage. I had like a bunch of friends uh, in, in the stands and, um, I don't know, they felt like they took much longer. The, the tables were dragged out, the heads up matches were dragged out. 
And this time, uh, you know, we were out in some section of the Amazon room by ourselves. And, uh, and then that, that was just it. And it was there. But, but obviously, you know, you know, it felt it, it, it like, it felt a little weird because of the setting compared to my other two wins. It's certainly just as significant. And uh, I'm, I'm you know, super excited. That was really cool.